Okay. Well, thanks for joining us again. Um, this is actually our first press briefing since May 14th. Um, I'm here with uh, Jerry Kerr, the hospital CEO. I'm Ryan Pichet, the county manager for Lewis County. Um, Lewis County continues to do well with the coronavirus. We are the third least impacted county in New York State. Um, obviously, that doesn't mean that uh, it's time to um, take our guard off. We need to continue to be um, diligent and remain on the right path. One of the important things that will help us uh, you know, continue to have success with the coronavirus, of course, is testing. And uh, that's why we have uh, Mr. Kerr here with us today, the CEO of Lewis County Health System. He's going to talk about uh, some new initiatives we have for testing in the Lewis County community. So I'll turn it over to Jerry. All right, thank you, Ryan. Um, there will be two topics I'll cover today. Um, the first will be uh, the COVID-19 community testing program. The second will be masks. And, um, but I know Ryan has some additional thoughts on masks, so I will then turn, um, turn this over to Ryan for that, and then I will have an opportunity to weigh in again. So um, I'm pleased to announce that uh, the Lewis County Health System will work with Lewis County Public Health in supporting a COVID-19 community testing program um, we are tentatively scheduled to begin on July 16th. Um, this program is our effort to create easy, open access to COVID-19 testing. Um, and we're also going to go out to some of our rural communities. We have built a schedule that um, gets us through the end of August, so for the next month and a half. Um, this is a partnership um, that was uh, formed over the last few weeks um, with the executive branch, and we'll let those folks give you their update. So, um, but they've made it possible to um, for us to do this. We are receiving um, test kits. We are receiving PPEs, and. Um, a lab, uh, a contract with a lab so we can get these things analyzed. All of that is covered. We are not uh, financially responsible and we will be receiving at this point around 300 test kits in the appropriate level of PPE support per week, which translates to 1,200 per month. So uh, we're very thankful and appreciative of that. In addition, with the help of uh, Congresswoman Stefani, we received some funding through our rural health clinic uh, designation in Beaver Falls, um, some resources for COVID-19 community testing. And that grant was for $47,000. So now we have a vehicle to pay for uh, staff coverage of the clinic. And in working with public health, we have a vehicle to make sure um, immediate, timely contact tracing is initiated if someone tests positive. So um, this is really exciting. So the clinics will be held three times a week. First clinic will be on the 16th in Lowville at the Lewis County General Hospital. Um, we have a drive-in, walk-in COVID-19 uh, site. And it's the site where we were doing the um, lab work, that part of the hospital campus, easy in, easy out. Clinic will run for three hours, 11 to two. We'll be staffed by two nurses, one from our health system, one from public health. So the Lowville Clinic will run on Monday and Thursdays. The Rural Outreach Clinics will run on Wednesdays. We will have two clinics in Harrisville, Beaver Falls, and Lyons Falls. Those clinics will be held at the health centers that are sponsored by the health system. So the Harrisville Health Center, the Beaver River Health Center, and the South Lewis Health Center. Um, so 
no appointment needed. You come and we will, over the course of the next six weeks, have a total of Twenty clinics, fourteen clinics in Lowville, six clinics in the rural communities. In addition, though we haven't finalized details, any of the large employers who who would like to create access to COVID-19 community testing, um, we are we are open to moving one of our Lowville clinic dates to a large employer. Um, and which which makes a lot of sense, you know. I, I think there's no need having all the employees come to our hospital campus if we can accomplish easy access to the workforce. Um, so that's the update on community testing. Uh, there any questions? Or? Okay. Do you well, any questions on, or do you want to save them all for the end? Let's save questions for the end. Of okay. So on the mask, I, I have some some comments. Um, we know how to uh, slow the spread of coronavirus, right? It's this, it's the mask, it's social distancing, and it's hand washing. And the science supports it, okay? It's not fake news, science supports the mask, science supports social distancing, and science supports hand washing. There is also a consistent set of lessons from around the world about how to reduce the number of new cases sharply. We should wear a mask if we are going to spend time near anybody who is not part of your household. We should minimize the time indoor with multiple people when possible. Government officials for our collective parts can slow the virus's spread by encouraging all of these actions, as well as organizing widespread testing and competent tracing of people who are likely to have the virus. With the announcement of the community testing program, we've accomplished it all. We will now have effective, easy access to testing. Our public health team has done a wonderful job with contact tracing and we are collectively in this county supporting mask wearing, social distancing, and hand washing. So we are fortunate. The past four months have repeatedly shown the value of these steps. Countries, regions, and counties that have taken them have either avoided outbreaks or beaten them back. Look at Italy, Spain, the state of New Jersey, the New York metropolitan area, and Lewis County. Those are examples of success. Over the last two weeks, however, the virus has begun spreading across the southern and western U.S. We have a second wave that is making the first wave look like it was small. Many people have stopped following public health guidance in those parts of the country. We can't allow that to happen here. They have gathered in restaurants, bars, churches, gyms, and they're not wearing their mask. Anthony Fauci, Dr. Fauci, the government's top infectious disease expert, told Congress recently, the next couple of weeks are going to be critical in our ability to address those surges that we are seeing in Florida, Texas, Arizona, and other states. If the surges aren't reversed, they will create a much larger pool who have the virus and can then spread it to others. If you've been watching the news over the last several days, he has hit the nail on the head. Whether the U.S. succeeds during this next stage is not a matter of epidemiology or lab science. It's a matter of political will and common sense. And in New York State, it means following the governor's executive orders. The executive order is law. Locally, what this means for the Lewis County Health System, we require masks of all who come to any of our properties and buildings for service. We have, we were early adopters of this initiative because the science showed it worked. And we are part of 
the success that Lewis County has had with our very low infection rate. There are many things that occurred for Lewis County to have a low infection rate. We continue to be an organization that requires wearing the mask, okay? So you probably sense a bit of uh, strength and passion in my voice on today's briefing because yesterday we had a healthcare consumer come by our campus and refuse to wear the mask. So I feel I have to address this issue head on. It is your right not to wear a mask. It is not your right to not wear a mask when you come to the Lewis County Health Systems, buildings and properties. It is my responsibility to make sure that we protect each other, the patients, the residents, the families, the visitors, the vendors, and our employees. If we're going to have a viable health system that is going to be able to serve the needs of Lewis County, we have to protect people. And the science has shown this mask, the social distancing and hand washing, is our most effective tool. So I want to be very clear, not wearing a mask is not an option if you're going to receive services in our health system. I'm very appreciative of the many families and patients and employees and visitors and vendors who have respected our policies that are driven by science and, quite frankly, the executive order of the governor. The DOH has made it very clear what it expects of health care providers throughout New York State. They're right. The other important thing about the mask is there's an appropriate way to wear it. It is not this way. This is a chin guard. The governor is absolutely right. It's not this way. Your nose is not covered. The appropriate way to wear the mask is covering your nose and your mouth. For the, for the foreseeable future, the long-term future, if you are a patient, resident, family member, visitor, vendor, employee, or anyone else who needs to come to our health system, the mass is required. Yes, I've heard they're a little bit uncomfortable. They're itchy. But compared to what folks who have become symptomatic after a COVID-19 exposure, this is minimal inconvenience. So, um, Lastly, while I have the, the, the stage, I am just another voice in rural America reaching out to our federal elected officials to come across, to bring forward a national model where face masks are expected. Mr. President, we need you to step up on this one and we need to make this the law of the land. And anything less than that, we are not going to conquer this virus. The science is clear. Countries, counties, regions that have seen second waves have a single thing in common. The mask, or two things I should say, the mask and social distancing. So, Brian? Very good. So, just to... Um Reiterate what Jerry is saying. Uh, going into the holiday weekend, there's going to be temptation in Lewis County um, to get together with family and friends. I think it's a natural thing to do, and um, to a certain extent, it's okay to spend some time, um, you know, outdoors and enjoying um, Independence Day. However, we need to remind people that uh, even with a gathering um, of family members, if they're folks that are not in your household, we're reminding people to spend, you know six feet of separation between people when you can. When you can't observe six feet of separation, you really should be wearing the mask. Um, the mask, just to reiterate what Jerry said, you know, this should not be a political statement. It's not a cultural statement. Um, wearing a mask is really a matter of science. It's a matter of math. And most importantly, it's about respecting your friends and neighbors and protecting those in our community that are more, more vulnerable to the coronavirus. Um, I think what we hear a little bit is, well, I'm young and strong and I'm not worried about getting coronavirus, so I don't need to wear the mask. 
Well, that's not really how the mask works. The mask protects, when, when Jerry wears a mask, it protects me. When I wear a mask, it protects Jerry. So even if you're not worried about getting the coronavirus, you might be young and strong, but you could be spewing you know, coronavirus um, through the droplets in your mouth onto the surface or in the air of a grocery store. And someone who is vulnerable to coronavirus could be walking right behind you. So it's about being respectful and protecting those in our community you know, that are more at risk. The elderly in our community, maybe those that are fighting or battling cancer right now, those are the types of folks that are more at risk. And this is a very simple thing that we all can do to contribute to making sure that everybody is staying safe. Um, we have had low numbers in Lewis County, that's great. We are spread out, we kind of you know, are naturally socially distant, but um, it doesn't mean we're immune to the coronavirus, and it doesn't mean that we should take our foot off the gas. We have done good, uh, we have done well in Lewis County to protect um, from the coronavirus, but uh, there's no need to let up now. Um, so continue to wear a mask, especially going into the holiday weekend. Let's make sure we're observing social distancing, we're wearing our masks, we're washing our hands, and we're doing all the very simple things that we can do to protect those in our community that are, are vulnerable to this disease. So um, with that, we'll take any questions um, that you guys might have. With the uh, new mobile testing that you guys will be rolling out, the clinics and things like that, uh, will, will the, there be a cost associated with that for the people receiving the test? Uh, that's a great question, and, and I should have addressed that in my opening comments. Um, no, um, we're working through a process right now. If someone has um, uh, health insurance, a process by which is, is there going to be a possibility for us to generate um, a billable encounter through health insurance. And we're still working details. How, with that said, however, um, health insurance coverage or resources will not prevent anyone in Lewis County from accessing this clinic. Okay. okay. And then this helps you with, um, I think the governor made an announcement yesterday that the, the guidelines were changing where anybody could get a test now. Um, yep. Does that help you meet those standards a little bit easier? Um, we are always going to approach it um, that way, and that's actually been around a little bit. I think he's, he's formalized it more um, and made it very clear anyone who wants a test um, can have one. And so, you know, we're pleased to have been asked by the, the governor, uh, we in Lewis County, to participate in this program and make it available to the residents of Lewis County. Our little twist, um, and what's a little unusual about our approach, is having multiple sites. Uh, we recognize some of our residents have transportation challenges. It doesn't address every transportation challenge, but by spreading out, I think we create greater access and opportunity for those who want to be tested. And will you guys be giving a document of kind of the schedule of the clinic? I know you talked a little bit about when the clinics will be happening and what locations and things like that. Will, will there be a schedule that we can share yes. with our audience as well? Okay. Yeah. Yes. You spoke of employers who have uh, have the option for testing, but that's been the case for a while. You've been extending to employers interested in testing their people. Have any taken you up on it? Yeah, that hasn't happened through the health system. I know public health has been very, uh, has tried very hard to be very accommodating. So I think what's, li what's a little different with this community option is if one of our large employers um, has an interest in getting, you know, a good number of their employees tested, instead of emptying out the workplace, we will work with them, you know, to set up uh, a clinic in, in the employee parking lot, for example. Could I, could I comment on that real quick? Yeah. So we, you know, I think the big picture goal has always been, you know, to test as many people as we can in Lewis County. Uh, you know, if you want a test, you should be able to get a test. The restriction from day one has been access to resources. So yes, the state has been very consistently saying anybody who wants a test can get a test, but only until recently have we really had the partnership with the state to provide adequate resources to make that possible. Um, in terms of businesses that have contacted us, we have had several 
that have sent employees up to public health um, and the, the call first clinic to get tested. Um, we're not sharing uh, specific businesses um, at this time, but we have had businesses in Lewis County take advantage of that. So. Um, having, having, so this, this is part of the, this is the grant you got to become a drive-in clinic and you're just doing a variation. Is this, or not a grant, but funding for becoming a, a drive-in clinic? Because there was none in the North Country, right? The nearest one was Utica. Utica. Mm -hmm. Are there others in the North Country? And is this to serve as the North Country drive-in clinic so anyone can come? Or is it exclusively for Lewis County residents? Um, I, do you want to? Uh, yeah, I can. I can. Um, my understanding, and I, of course I don't know the details of every, uh, of, of every county, but the state is partnering with um, health systems across the North Country to come up with a similar model. Um, you know, some of the larger urban counties have done a big drive-through state-sponsored clinic. That doesn't make sense in the North Country because we are spread out over, you know, right. six, you know, six counties and and uh, you know, hundreds of miles. So um, this approach of partnering with the health systems makes a lot more sense, and we really like it in Lewis County because. It provides us with the resources and also the flexibility to do what makes sense for our community. And what makes sense for our community is to have a hub in Lowville where we can test regularly and then have a series of clinics that we can get out to and make sure that everyone in the Lewis County community has access to testing. And what's the turnaround time now for results? And a joint question, is the new processor analyzer up and running yet? Have you gotten the reagents? We have not received the reagents. In fact, I checked with our lab director two days, uh, it was either Monday or Friday, so very recently, and we have not received the reagents. The latest word on reagents is mid to end of July, so we're not at the midpoint yet. Um, with regards to working with this lab, I can't speak to how long it will take to get the results because this is a new lab for us and we have absolutely no experience. Where is this one, Jerry? Um, it's called uh, BioReference and um, so I really can't speak much about them. Um, you know, the state has been very proactive in setting up the relationships or so we're very appreciative of that. Um, and it's going to be fairly easy to get the specimens to the lab, um, but I'm really not well versed on the, the particulars of that particular organization. So. How long is the turnaround time now for regular testing? Um, we're seeing it within two or three days. I'm not, um, and for the, um, the the tests that are related to surgeries, um, we're able to get those very quickly. So. By and large, turnaround time is no longer an issue. Um, that, that I think across the board, across the state, um, uh, there has been marked improvement at all levels with the turnaround times. And so all these clinics are state mandated. So we're getting like the 300 tests you were talking about or additional tests and the um, PPE that we're getting are from the state. Yeah, I don't know if I would use the word mandated. I think I would use the word partnership. partnership. Um, you know, they reached out, asked if, if we would work with them, and there was some kind of formula or calculation based on the population. Um, and frankly, 300 uh, tests per week is very generous. Um, it'll be interesting what our, what our utilization is. I believe um, early on we may see some activity, you know, almost like a pent-up demand kind of thing. Um, so, but that's part of our, our process of understanding, um, and we have reports, as you might uh, might know, to 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 complete and, and file so that data can be gathered. Uh, but I think this is exciting. Um, you know, we have a vehicle through a federal grant with the help of Congresswoman Stefanik. We have the work with uh, the DOH and, and you know the governor's office. I'm very proactive and making this available to us. So it is all coming together um, where we can continue to increase testing. And testing is an important part of understanding where the virus is and how active it is in one's community. Speaking of testing, is that, there... Is that, Nick, real quick? I think, uh, I think actually it's important also to say that we need to encourage Lewis County residents to go get tested, come to the sites that are gonna be set up by Lewis County General Hospital the pathway forward, you know, back to normalcy is 
a rigorous testing and tracing system in our community. And this is going to help us get there. So, you know, even if you don't feel that you've been exposed, even if you feel that you've been safe, go get tested because it's going to help us collect data. It's going to help us um, identify hotspots in the community before they become hotspots. So, you know, make sure you log on, look at the schedule, and we'd encourage all of our, um, you know, residents in Lewis County to come to one of the sites, get tested, and contribute to, you know, battling this virus in our community. Even if you don't feel sick, you coming, showing up, getting tested, you know, you might pick up on something that you didn't know you had. So um, everybody, you know, is very much encouraged to, to participate in this program. And isn't it also true that asymptomatic people can spread the disease? And even if they don't happen to spread it to someone who has a weak immune system, they can also then spread it to other people. So isn't it a way to really stem the disease by finding out who can transmit right. it? Is that correct? Correct. Okay. So when we're talking about testing, um, I realize we don't have somebody from public health here today, but maybe one of you two could address. I know we're still, um, the state has a mandate in place with the nursing home testing, so that's still once a week the nursing home employees are being tested. Correct. What percentage of the tests are going to just general members of the community um, as opposed to the nursing home? And as we see, um, looking at the data here, over the last 10 days since uh, June 22nd, we've added about seven new cases. We've went from 30 to 37. Um, are you seeing a pattern with that? Are they are they uh, popping up in different places or? So I, I, I was briefed by um, our public health director, Ashley Waite, before um, Jerry and I got together. We have seen, as Nick pointed out, about seven new cases over the last 10 days. Those have not been uh, a cluster of cases as the state would identify their seven isolated incidences. Um, but to answer your question, more uh, a high percentage of the tests that we're doing in Lewis County right now, right now, our excuse me, a high percentage of the tests we're doing in Lewis County right now are from the mandatory nursing home testing. So this new testing structure is an opportunity to get beyond the walls of our uh, residential care facilities and really get out into the community. And this is something that we have wanted to do and um, really have needed to do since the, the virus started um, back in March, but we now finally have the partnership and the resources with the state to do it. So we're hopeful that um, we can you know, increase the percentage of testing that's coming from the community and not just um, you know, the mandatory weekly nursing home mm -hmm. testing. And I know a big focus for you guys today has been you know, focusing on the mask and the importance of wearing masks. Um, Brian, if you could just talk a little bit about, um, I know that you get the, the New York pause complaints into your office. Um, what have we been looking at at like the last week, 10 days? Like what, are there pl specific places people have been running into issues with? Have, have there been a lot of complaints about people not wearing masks or not very many? How's well, that looking? We, we've had what you would expect in Lewis County, which is um, pretty mild, you know, very reasonable complaints. Um, I think the biggest place that people have, have noticed is Walmart, which has been well publicized. Um, actually, all three of your uh, you know, uh, media have, have covered um, the issues with Walmart. But you know, some of these larger corporations, that's in the hands of the state of New York. You know, we're not, Lewis County's not going to go to battle with corporate Walmart. Um, and so that's up to the state to, to um, put those larger corporations in compliance. Um, some of the smaller stores, honestly, I don't think in Lewis County it's been malice. I don't think it's been political. I think it's been um, a matter of us having to educate those mom and pop stores and, and help them understand why it's important and um, you know why uh, you know everyone should be encouraged to wear a mask. So really, it's been a matter of education. And once we've talked to people, we found by and large in Lewis County, um, everyone has been very willing to play ball and, and try to do the right thing. Thank you. So uh, doing the right thing is, is an interesting notion, right? Doing the, the right thing sometimes means we become a little uncomfortable, okay? And, but for, for, the, for the health and wellness of the community, that needs to happen. And we're, I feel blessed in that I work with women and men of science every single day. So I have access to people who have a great understanding of how diseases are spread. 
At the federal level, there are three people who have incredible knowledge, Dr. Fauci, Dr. Burke, and Dr. Redfield. And we are, we are being well served by all three of those individuals. And we need to continue to listen to these exceptional women and men of science who know how we can attack this. And attacking the virus means sometimes we're going to be a little bit uncomfortable. This isn't a free speech issue. This isn't a rights issue. This is how we work together to deal with a global epidemic, pandemic, that has killed over 100,000 Americans. And the death toll globally is much larger. So, you know, I really take stock in scientists who have studied data, who have studied approaches, that if we implement them, large organizations, small organizations, small government, large government, then we will be able to get to the other side of this. And getting to the other side, in my mind, and is the effective vaccine, okay? And we're not there yet. Um, and if we want our kids going back to school, if we want our kids being able to participate in athletics, if we want to be able to go to church service with other members of our community, we have to be smart. And, you know, Dr. Fauci, Dr. Burke, Dr. Redfield, they are incredible resources for our country, and we would do well to just listen and incorporate. And I think, um, you know, the governor has really taken to heart what these folks have said. And I haven't talked to the governor, but you know, I listened to his press briefings. Um, Dr. Zucker and his team at the DOH providing guidance to those of us who are on the front lines. It's hard to argue with the guidance. It is truly hard to argue with the guidance. It has helped Lewis County Health System be a safer healthcare facility simply by following the guidance. For, for our small businesses and large businesses, I, it is okay to have an expectation that customers coming in will wear a mask. You have control over that, and if a customer feels that they don't want to, they should not be served. It is truly, that's how we will make sure we don't have hot spots in Lewis County. And that when we do have positives, they're, they're not clustered. They're spread out and they're managed appropriately by public health, so. Speaking to that point, people are coming up again more readily. Do we still have the county recommendation for people to uh, quarantine for two weeks? I know the governor has put yeah. in place now uh, a mandate that people coming from out of state should. Do we still also have that locally? And how has that been working? Yeah, so I would say our local um, guidance that we put out back in March has been superseded at this point by the state guidance. Back in March, we were talking about hot spots that pretty much just included New York City and the larger metro area, um, some parts of Pennsylvania. Uh, at this point, I don't think you can consider those areas necessarily hot spots. The hot spots have changed. So um, we are, as is the entire state, under um, the governor's executive order for outside travelers. Um, there's 16 states at this point that are identified by the governor. Um, if you, you know, someone coming in from one of those states, um, they are officially quarantined by public health. Our guidance that we did locally was, was a self-quarantine, you know, kind of be respectful type of thing, contact public health. But the governor's um, executive order is, is more structured and um, it, is, it, uh, it will be an enforced quarantine by um, the local public health departments, so. Um, with that, there's a lot of people that just come up on the weekends and even from the states on the list. And we know recently many people from out of, out of, from those hotspot states came up for an illegal event in the area. So having said that, what what could they don't have to quarantine for 14 days because they're only here for a weekend? That's going to be the mentality, right? So, is there anything that the county can say, which is if you're coming to ride our trails, test before you come, or come and test, or anything like that? Um, that's a complicated question because we don't have, you know, it, New York is one state, the United States is one country, you know, 
our, our borders between counties and states are, are porous and that's good. It's part of, you know, how, you know, we're all one as a country. So, you know, we don't have checkpoints, um, you know, when you, you come up Route 12 into Lewis County. Um, and we're not going to do that. I think this is um, a more general, um, you know, executive order about folks that are coming up for the season, you know, coming up for, um, or, or moving up, you know, to try to get out of, of some of the areas that are having trouble right now. So um, it, it's a tricky one. It, it isn't, you know, enforcement is not easy, particularly on that. Um, but uh, I know that the governor's office is working um, on airports. So people that are coming in um, via, uh, you know, uh, an airplane, they will be quarantined and identified more quickly. Um, but, you know, that's, I think what it really comes down to is trying to be respectful, understanding that our community hasn't had the types of problems that other places have had, but that doesn't mean we won't have those problems and we need everybody to contribute, um, no matter where you're from, even if you're, you know, living right here in Lewis County and haven't left Krogan the whole time, you still need to wear a mask, you still need to social distance, and we all can contribute to uh, making sure that Lewis County remains a safe place. Have you been provided any guidance from the governor on the uh, COVID-19 uh, enforcement task force that's being put together? Do you know if that'll have any impact locally or? Our guidance from the governor uh, is the same guidance everyone else gets. Um, you watch the press briefing and you learn. <laughs> so um, we, we have no additional information on that, no. Okay. And was this community testing put into place and thought out before the governor made that announcement yesterday? Um, oh, well, Jerry yeah, can speak to that, but we've been working with the state for weeks to okay. put this together. Yeah, yeah I, yesterday's announcement specific to uh, to the topic of COVID-19, I, I don't really see them linked. Um, this has been an ongoing conversation, um, you know, and, and when you initiate something that is not well defined, and also we have the capacity to um, personalize it for our region, um, you know, there have been several meetings to figure it out, finalize the resources coming in, um, both, you know, monetarily and equipment. Uh, so it's coming together. Um, and in fact, our first clinic day is on a Thursday. And the reason we did that is it gives us an opportunity to figure out what the bugs are and then have uh, Friday and the weekend to work those out before the next clinic on Monday. So it was very purposeful choosing the Thursday so we can work out the operational bugs. Um, the fact that we're going on the road with our clinic just adds n not great complexity, but just some additional nuances that we have to be able to work through. For example, you know, do we have adequate canopies? You know, I mean, it, it sounds like a small detail, but you know, we got to be prepared for weather. Do we have the right traffic control measures? And you know, so they're not huge, but there's just a list of things we have to work through. Initially, you had talked about in the board meeting using um, fire departments as locations, oh. as community centers. What changed with that? Um, it was a way, uh, oh, that's a great question, and that was part of the early brainstorming of how to do this. It really came down to simplifying. And it, folks know where our clinics are. Um, and our parking lots are, are set up in such a way that we can support a drive-in and walk-in approach. Um, and it, it administratively becomes less complicated because when you start using other properties, you then have to get into memorandum of agreements and you have to work through all sorts of different processes. All of our sites are on county-owned property. You know, so it was really more complexity. It was just made easier. Yeah. Do you currently have any um, patients hospitalized with COVID at your facility? Yeah, no. Okay. I, I truly can't remember the last time. It has been quite some, some our time. Our first two? Yeah, I think it was our first two. Um, and then we had one case that was hospitalized outside of the county. Yeah. And, yes. we, and we currently have one hospitalized outside. It's the same, same one that was the 10 years ago one. Okay. And um, I know that we've covered this before, but could we just quickly state again, um, some people have been asking about the, the conflicting data between the New York State Depa oh, Department right. of Health <laughs> with Lewis County and yeah. Lewis County's data, so. Yeah. 
Okay, so we've talked about this a couple times. Um, our data, local data, the press release that we put out is correct. And you know, nothing against the state of New York, they're dealing with large volumes of data. Um, we're, it's, it's essentially the same issue that we had back in April, we addressed this issue. There is a zip code in Brooklyn that has a hospital that is one digit off from our zip code here in Lowville, and it's 13367 is ours, and theirs is 13667, and sometimes the data gets put in wrong. And so we have not had any COVID deaths in Lewis County, despite the state sometimes showing that we have. We only have one hospitalization right now, currently, despite the state showing sometimes that we have more. So our local data is correct. Our public health department is tracking down every case, whether you know the person tests positive you know, in Ida County but lives in Lewis, or you know if they're a Lewis County resident and they're testing positive, we're tracking them down and we're making sure that they're included in our numbers. So um, we'll work to get that resolved with the state, but um, our, our local numbers are what um, everyone should be going by. Yeah. But that's a good question, people, you know, uh, it's it's natural to see the discrepancy. Well, I know we've covered it before, yeah. but it does come yeah. up repeatedly, yeah. so I just thought it was worth bringing it up no, again. And absolutely. Yeah. Explaining that for people. We'll, we'll, we need to work to get that cleared up once more, but yeah, good question. Anything else? I think I'm good. I'm good. Okay. Well, thanks, guys. Thanks for coming up. Thank you. Now, to your question, 